Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Adventures. Today we're going to look at a battery from Go KWH. I don't get the name. I don't get the, the names for some of these uh, batteries, guys, but that's what they're calling it. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank the good folks over at Go KWH for sending this battery for a review for you. Now, they didn't tell me what to say, and they don't want to look at my video beforehand, and they're not paying me other than the battery review so everything that i say in this video will be my own words not theirs all right let's see get that part out of the way i know some people don't like that but hey that's the way it is it takes a lot of time to put one of these videos together let's take a look at the battery and see what it looks like all right so here's the battery you look at the uh, top right hand corner there it says go kwh uh, like I said, I don't get the name, but uh, so hey, maybe this is go kilowatt hours. I guess that maybe that's what they call it. So it's a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, 1,280 watt hour LifePo4 battery. That's a lithium iron phosphate. Uh, it gives you a couple things on there that says do not reverse connections from the charger to the battery. Don't throw into a fire. You know, all the uh, things you're not supposed to do. Down at the bottom, it's got uh, Made in China. It's got a bunch of things like down out there where uh, basically you uh, just tells you again what to do. Uh, SCC, CE, and all the all the different things that these batteries have on them. Now that uh, go in the middle here, this little sign right here, that is to do a phone app. You can monitor this battery with your phone. And it will tell you quite a quite a bit of information, as you'll see later. Let me uh, flip this thing up now. Hopefully, we can still see it in the screen. It's not real heavy, typical for the uh, these lithium batteries, guys. All right, on the top, you see you have your positive and your negative, and then right here you've got a. If you push this button. It has a meter on it and let me uh, I'll show you close-ups of this later this meter could tell you a bunch of stuff about how your battery is I will say on there it does tell you percentage it's right now you can see it's a zero because I just got through testing this thing that was a problem on earlier batteries where that wasn't very accurate but today we'll take a look at it and see how accurate it really is nothing else other than the handle up here it comes with two eight millimeter bolts they, I would say they are plenty long enough. In fact, maybe just a little long, uh, unless you're putting more multiple things on. You may need a washer. I uh, I put uh, cables on it earlier, and it was just barely, barely sh the bolts were just barely short enough to fit without uh, bombing out. But that's kind of nice because that way it does give you, you know, plenty of bolt there if you if you need to hook up multiple things to this battery. So let's get into the testing. Uh, we're going to test this with an inverter and we're going to run a few things off of the inverter see how it handles power you know drawn from the battery we're also going to hook up to this uh, capacity tester that i have here uh, there we go so it's out of the glare of the of the lights there and this this does pretty good let's go hook this to an inverter and see how it holds up to some uh, different op power options that we're going to hook to it if you look here we've got the battery is a Go KWH. It's a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, 1,280 watt hour LiPo 4 battery. We have it hooked to a 1,200 watt Ampeak inverter. It's a pure sine wave converter. Inverter, excuse me. This is a this is a I think 750 or 1,500 watt heater. Also has a fan. This will, will not run the thing all the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. We're showing one watt. Hopefully you guys can see that. And that's the uh, idle power being used. And plus we have a little light on here. So let me turn the fan on. And it's showing 27 watts right now. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then up here, this is the DC side, 2.8 amps. And right now we're just on fan. Let me turn it away from the wires here a little bit. 
Now we're going to go ahead and power it up to the 750 mark. It's in that range someplace. It will slowly come up. And they're both kind of showing the same thing. So a little higher. It's actually showing about 900. It's going to level off here in a second. We'll let it run for a while just to do a capacity test anyhow. Okay, so it's running around 780 ish 70 it looks like 70 amps up here on this that's dc and it's showing the battery has come down i don't this is not accurate as far as the battery goes it's just uh showing that battery voltage so showing 12.1 volts right now on this now the battery up here i'm going to try and read this it still shows full charge and it's showing it Oh man, I can't hardly read it. 98% charged right now. I had, I did have it on earlier. I just took it off the charger today, uh, a couple hours ago. There we go. We're running that right now. It's about 758 where it's leveled off at. I will turn it back to the fan now. It's down to about 20, 29 to 30 watts there. The battery came back up because the voltage came back up to 13.1. So, it will run that for sure. Let me uh, see if I can find something else we can run on this. Okay, so I've got the sander I did a review on. I'll put a link to that review also. I don't know if it's going to run this. We will click it on and see what happens. It may be too much surge. I'm not sure. Yep, too much for it. So, that's not the battery's fault. That's the inverter's not strong enough, guys. We'll try something else. Okay, so I've got this uh, Ryobi sander. It's an oscillating sander or orbital sander. Should run this. So hopefully you can see that, about 215 watts, all right? So, so small tools, it's gonna be able to run that. I don't really have anything else out here, guys, that we can do. So at least it passed the test. Uh, small appliances it kind of depends on how big your inverter is i do have a bigger inverter but it's still it's still not enough to run that heater all right let's look, let's take a quick look at their their uh their manual and uh if you guys need anything off the manual just pause it and and read it i'm going to go through fairly quick guys okay okay so here's the manual uh the user manual from them now this is a new manual. It uh, the original one, the one it shipped with me was not the right one, but they sent me this to uh, actually look at. It says smart Bluetooth and LCD display on the 12 volt or the 24 volt LiFo4 batteries, guys. And this is the one that I got. The top one up on top here. They sell. They also sell a 200, and they also sell a 24 volt version also. So down here, just you got your disclaimer and all your safety stuff uh, warnings. If you guys want to see that, I'll stop for a second. You can look at that if you want to. Here's your table of contents. And then here's all the dimensions. I'll stop there for you for a second also. The battery we got is the one on the top left there. Uh, they have the 25.6 volt and another a 200 amp hour 12.8 volt. It comes with M8 uh, bolts, post bolts. And there's 16 millimeters of length on those. They're a little long if you don't have much to put on there, so you may have to put some extra washers, guys. And here's the specifications. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is the case material is ABS flame retardant plastic. It has the LED, five-year warranty, all right? And then here's all your specs. I'll stop there for a second for you guys. Okay, it says greater than or equal to 4,000 cycles, guys. Uh, service life is 10 years, IP65 built-in Bluetooth BMS is the protection on that. And there's your charge and discharge and storage. In parallel, you can hook up to four batteries in parallel. And in series, you can do the same. <clears throat> here's your battery connections here, preparation. Like I said, I'll stop for a second. You guys can, can uh, pause the video if you need to. Cable sizing, I'll stop there for you also. And we're gonna keep moving. 
the battery terminals, it shows uh, how to hook properly hook them up and how not to hook them up. I, I'll pause there for a second too. And then down here, it shows you connections. On the left here is series connections and the right is parallel. And like I said, you can hook um, up to four batteries. It says battery charging here. Um, let's see, where did I see this? It says 50 amps. That's a lot, guys, for battery charging. It say you can. It actually says you can do a hundred, but they don't. They don't say to do that regularly. Uh, myself, ten to twenty is probably all I would do. Um, I'm using ten on mine. If if you charge your batteries too fast, it uh, it could actually um, make the battery not last quite as long. And there's your storage and temperature capacity, troubleshooting, LCD. Now, it does have Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth your phone. I'm just going to show that to you. you. They want you to sign up, and here's all the things it can do. It does i it does uh, Apple or Android. All right, I'll stop here every once in a while for you guys. What it does say though, they want you to give a bunch of information to sign in, but they also come down here a little lower, and it says guest mode. Uh, the guest mode you don't have to. It basically, you can skip the account registration, and it just tells all about how to do that. Um, <clears throat> Let me go back. Here's the sign in. Here's where you pick this number, the uh, figure two here. If you see down here, it says figure two. This is where you pick the battery. And then it, over here, it gives you all the information about the battery. Pretty cool. I've got the same thing on my solar controller, and that's what I'll use in, versus having two different setups. Okay, here we go again. And then real time interface. You guys can stop that and read that if you want to. Control interface. And then it has guest mode. It tells what you can do in guest mode down here. And then my interface. It may be just a little bit different. I did early. And then here's your warranty info. I'll stop there for a second. All right, guys. That's a quick look at the owner's manual. Like I said, if you want to read anything more than I, I went through it pretty quick, you can just pause the video and then read it yourself. Okay. All right. Let's get on to more of the video here. Okay, here's my battery tester. I've got it hooked up. We are going to set it at about 10 amps, so um, that should be about 10 hours. So let me start bringing this up really slow here, guys. Okay. And basically all this really is is just a heater with a fan on it. Let's bring this up really slow or it'll go right past. Yeah, it was zeroed out. Okay. So we're just about to 10 amps. Let me just bring it up with this one now. There we go. And it's showing 13.5 now. It was 14.1 when we hooked it up. Okay, we got 13.2 uh, volts, 10.1 amps, 134 watts. 2.65 watt hour so far and 0.2 amp hours and it's been on for a minute and 28 seconds so we're, what we're going to do is we're gonna let this thing run to about oh 50 amp hours then we're going to look at that the gauge on the battery to see how accurate it is i know that was something they had in the in the at the first and when this company first contacted me they canceled out for a while until they redid the battery so hopefully they're listening to their customers and trying to fix things. So we'll check back. All right, so there's the uh, meter. It's showing 100%. This is the, this is the uh, meter on the battery itself. It says 14.1. And 14.1, and the temperature 177. Or 17.7 it shows full charge 100% so we're going to check this thing at about uh, 50 amp hours and see if it says 50% okay and see how accurate that thing is give or take a few all right if you guys look we're still at 12.9 uh, 12 volts 10 amps and we're at 9.8 or 9.9 .9 amp hours on the battery on the battery here, it says 
so that's pretty close. And then look at the, uh, if you look right here, it says 10.1 amps. So it actually is telling what the draw is on the battery right there. So that's pretty cool. Fairly accurate so far. We'll check it later. All right, as you can see, we're down to 10.5 volts. Still drawing 10 amps. We're at 103.69 amp hours. So I call that a pass. Uh, 1,315 watt hours. And then it took 10 hours and 17 minutes. And it's still going. So that's a call out of win, guys. All right, guys. So this battery did t pass the test. It went 103 amp hours. This is only a 100 amp hour battery, so it did do better than it's supposed to do. And it was actually still going. I need to reset the low voltage on my capacity tester to so the batteries will go down a little farther. But it still, it went past the 100 amp hour mark. Now, there will be a link in the description to these batteries. They're currently selling for about $329, I think is the price. But if you put Chuck 12V in, they will actually give you a discount code for $269. And I, it's a little more expensive than some of the other batteries. But that's the Bluetooth part of the battery and that gauge on top. Now, that gauge was pretty accurate. Sorry, I didn't do it at 50 amp hours, but uh, I kind of missed that point. But I did do it early, luckily, and it was right. It was right on. And then at the end, it, was, it showed zero, and uh, that was also accurate. Now, it also showed how many amps were coming out of the battery. That's kind of a nice feature there in itself. So... So pretty nice setup. So if you guys got anything out of this video, please hit that like. If you're new here and you like content like this and anything about ham radio and antennas and stuff like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, hit all. That way you get my future videos. I'm Chuck, KK6USY, and this is Ham Radio Ventures. I know you guys' time is valuable, and I'm glad you spent it with me today. So 73 all, and hope to catch you guys on the airwaves.